story to tell. When the Soviet Tu-144 supersonic passenger plane expected to be arrived to Concord, first appeared to the world at the 1971 Paris Air Show. Everyone was impressed. In the heated race to develop a supersonic passenger plane, it was the Soviet Union that caught off to a good start. The then president of France, Georges Pompidou, put nationalism aside, calling the Tu-144 a beautiful plane. The Concorde manufacturer also admitted that the Soviet aircraft was quieter and tidy. The two-plaf Tu-144 looks very much like his Anglo-French mad driver, giving it the nickname Concorde Ski. But the aircraft is somewhat bizarre and more mysterious. It came about in the context of the Soviet aerospace industry that made truly remarkable strides. In 1971, Moscow successfully made the Mars program and launched the first space station into orbit. The Soviet Union seemed in a perfect position to beat the West in supersonic passenger transport. The Soviet supersonic passenger plane made its maiden flight on December 21st, 1968, two months before a Concorde similar flight, and then won the title of the world's first supersonic flight in June 1969, ahead of the competition by four months. Those were the iconic victories of the Soviet Union. Overall, the Tu-144 had the same quality as its Western European counterpart, but was superior in terms of top speed and service ceiling. This helped the Tu-144 reduce noise for cities it flies over compared to Concorde. Both planes were ahead of their time. The Tu-144 had a double delta to wing. They also added two small retractable surfaces called a mustache canard with fixed double slotted leading edge slats and retractable double slotted flaps. These were fitted just behind the cockpit and increased lift and low speeds. The Tu-144 was operated by a crew of three, designed to carry around 150 passengers. It was 65.7 meters long, wingspan was 28.8 meters, and height was 12.55 meters. Its empty weight was 99.2 tons, and maximum takeoff weight was 207 tons. The Tu-144 was powered by four close-off RT-3651 turbojet engines or Kuznetsov NK-144 turbofan afterburning engines with 240 kN thrust H. In theory, the Tu-144 could reach a top speed of 2,500 km per hour, equivalent to Mark 2.15, cruise speed of 2,125 km per hour, range of 6,500 km, service ceiling of 
20,000 meters and rate of climb was 50 meters per second. After an impressive debut at the biggest aviation event in 1971, the Tu-144 continued to gain attention in 1973, this time due to courtesy, not victory. That year, the opponents once again faced off. At first, the Concorde completed its launch without a hitch. But the Soviet representative opted for a much bolder performance with deadly turns. Suddenly, the TQ-144 broke in mid-air and crashed into the village of Gushanvir, killing six people on board and eight on the ground. The Paris incident delayed the Soviet program for four years and Concorde went commercial first. But the tragedy still did not completely convince the Soviets that the plane needed more testing. When the TU 144 finally entered passenger service in 1977, it turned out that the plane was cramped, messy, and unbearably noisy, unlike Concorde. It was only able to maintain supersonic speeds when using afterburner, like a jet. The pilots used the TU-144 to serve a two-hour flight route. However, flights were mostly half-empty. Eventually, the TU-144 turned to post and freight instead of passenger. And then the service was also suspended after six months. The short life of the TU-144 ended with only 55 flies. TU-144s suffered hundreds of problems, most of them in flight. Even the passengers had to communicate with each other in writing because it was too noisy. On May 23, 1978, a plane caught fire near Moscow and had an emergency landing, killing two flight engineers. The crash resulted in a complete flight ban on the TU-144. Soviet leaders lost interest in the TQ-144 program. They had endured all the headaches associated with this intricate program. Over the next few years, the aircraft quietly retired and production of the aircraft halted. The entire TU-144 program stopped completely in 1984. In total, only 17 TU-144 were produced, including the prototype. My video about the Soviet supersonic TU-144 answer. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.